Alrighty guys, I have lived a short 32 years and let me tell you what, I have a little bit of history with depression, okay, since I was basically in high school. So I was diagnosed with depression when I was 16. So my life pretty much since then has been a complete roller coaster, ups and downs. I've struggled with substance abuse. I've struggled with anxiety, all of those things. These are seven ways that I avoid depression or to get myself out of depressive states. And I've had to learn all of these the hard way, but as soon as I start implementing them, my life just seems like a little bit more even keel. It's not so up and down, up and down. You know what I mean? Like there's a little bit more structure, a little more fulfillment. Number one is being super selfish when it comes to taking care of myself. I don't care what anybody says. I'm going to get the sleep that I need, whether that's eight hours, whether that's 10 hours. If I need the sleep, I'm going to get the sleep because I know for me, if I get up early and neglect my sleep in order to like get things done, what's going to happen is like, I'm not going to be able to focus on those things. Or I'm going to be super foggy and not be able to like be very efficient when I'm working on anything. So I would just rather get the sleep. And then when I do work, I am able to get things done more efficiently. So it's worth it to me. I'm not really wasting any time. I'm saving time because I'm more productive with everything that I'm doing. I make sure I go to the gym. I make sure I eat healthy and eat clean. I make sure I shower. That's a big one. All of you that also struggle with depression, like I know that that's probably a big one for you too, is just showering, just like regular hygiene can be a struggle sometimes. So even just like taking a shower can make a huge difference in my mood. It makes me feel so much better when I just like, I feel like refreshed and rejuvenated, just showering and exfoliating and grooming myself and and putting on clean clothes is like a breath of fucking fresh air. So highly recommend you showering if you don't shower or if you can't shower, just try to do something for yourself. It helps tremendously, I promise you. I'll also invest in therapy if I have the extra money. I'll get a session or two for my therapist when I can meet up with her. It levels me out emotionally, someone I can bounce my emotions off of that can kind of help me dissect and understand exactly why I'm, why I'm feeling things. And I have a super solid like morning routine to give me some structure in my life to make sure that I'm like accomplishing everything that I need to do. I wake up, have my coffee, read for 10 minutes, meditate for 10 minutes, go to the gym, shower, and eat breakfast. Like that's a solid like couple hours out of my day as soon as I wake up, but that ensures that I'm getting everything done that I need to get done that day that keeps me sane. So it's worth it to me to take those couple of hours every day before any other bullshit comes at me. I'm taking care of myself first after getting a good night's rest. So number two is to avoid complacency and to always be working towards something. So just having a list of goals that I set for myself as far as fitness, emotional goals, financial goals, mindset goals. Like I constantly have, have goals that I'm working toward and I always change them, add more, whatever it is. Like I'm always working towards something because otherwise I get complacent and my life gets fucking boring and I can't I can't do that. That's not that's not how I roll. You know, I need to be working towards something, something that that there's like a positive outcome once I accomplish it. Number three is that I have to stay learning about things. So whether that's like reading books about things I'm interested in, whether that's like hiring a coach and learning things from them, like it could be anything, just like stay learning, stay reading, stay proactive and like keep my mind working and like being challenged because that's like really fulfilling to me if I'm just sitting around and not doing anything and not learning more about the things that I'm interested in, it makes my life seem like pretty worthless and empty. So I have to make sure that I like continue to learn about the things that I love to know about, to read about. Number four is to cut out all toxicity. And I'm talking with like friends, relationships, family, jobs, whatever it is, toxicity cannot exist in my world. So I like for you to envision this. If you are holding a bowl of water and that bowl of water, it represents your peace of mind. And every time something chaotic or destructive comes at you or comes towards you, it bumps you and it kind of shakes up the water. A little bit of water spills out here, a little bit of water spills out there. I'm telling you, I protect that peace of mind now with everything that I have. I've had some really uncomfortable conversations within the last six months with friends that I care deeply about that I just had to distance myself from because they were just living a destructive lifestyle. They weren't learning and healing and trying to do better. They were just like letting themselves crumble under the pressure of their own lives rather than being proactive. And I had to cut that out. It started to affect me. I've, I left, I've left jobs because of this before. And these conversations are going to fucking suck guys. It's okay to care about people and also understand that they can't be in your life anymore. You can have a job where you love your coworkers, but you're fucking miserable. 
Like what, what's the point of staying in a situation where you're constantly miserable? It's not worth it to me. Same with relationships. You're in a relationship, you could be head over heels for this person, but if they treat you like shit and they're not doing things to become a better person and it's affecting you regularly for long, long or short periods of time, like it's time to have that un uncomfortable conversation and move past that. It's just not worth your peace of mind. It's not worth the chaos and destruction. And for people like us, if y'all struggle with mental illness and depression and anxiety, like we really need to really need to protect our space. And that's one of the things we got to do is just by cutting out those people that add chaos to our lives. Number five, I do not drink at all anymore. None. Because I know when I drink, I'm not going to know how the night's going to pan out. I could have a great time or I could end up having an awful time. I don't know. I could spend a bunch of money because I'm taking Ubers and I'm getting drunk munchies and then I wake up the next day and I feel extremely mentally unwell and physically unwell. And it's like that for days. It's just not worth it to me. I feel extremely fragile for those few days. I feel embarrassed by how I acted. Number six for all my ladies, monthly cycle awareness. If you can't tell, we got a little uh, hormonals going on right now too. And I'm telling you, for like four or five days out of the month, I know that I'm going to be extremely sensitive. I'm going to be, I'm going to have a short fuse. My blood's going to feel like it's boiling. I'll probably have to distance myself from some people because I know that I am extra sensitive and emotional. And for those four or five days is when I regularly remind myself that it's just the hormones. Don't take it personally. This will all pass in a few days. Go eat your snack, go watch your movie and leave it at that. Number seven. And this one's super important as well as just being of service to others. And I know that sounds super lame, but hear me out. Just texting a friend and saying, hey, how you doing? Without any, any expectations in return. Going to the grocery store and helping an old lady take her groceries to her car or holding the door open for somebody or whatever it is to just get out of this. I'm telling you, it works. It works. It builds self-esteem. It makes you feel good. Like you felt like you did something positive for somebody and that's... That really builds uh, self-esteem in the long run and short term. So those are the seven ways that I personally keep myself like even keel as far as like emotional well-being goes. And I hope it helps some of you out there. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, let's get it.